Okay, it is a demonstration of the ExoClock website for the Crayford Manor House Astronomical Society, Dartford. Exoplanet transits are time dependent and therefore we need to know the time that exoplanet is predicted to transit its host star. So we'll use this website exoclock.space to give us a list of possible transits that we can observe tonight. We will have our own login for the club for this site and it will um, allow us to have our telescope in the Dick Chambers Observatory registered here. So they'll have, they'll have the parameters of our telescope, the location of it and things like um, its diameter, focal length and how low above the horizon um, we're prepared to observe. When you log in, um, Generally, if you're doing this quite often, it keeps you logged in for about a week. After that, it will log you out and you have to log in again. What you really need to do, there's lots of uh, menus here, but the main one for observing is my schedule. So just click on that, select today, and it will go off and calculate the stars that it thinks are available for you today. Now, if you have multiple telescopes, then you'll have multiple lists. For some reason, I have multiple telescopes with exactly the same details in, um, so I only ever have to go halfway down the list. And you can see for my eight inch telescope, there's a fair few, and I suspect there will be significantly more for uh, our 16 inch telescope. Now, when looking at this list, there's a number of things worth considering. The first is if there's an alert. Um, so these can have alert, high, medium or low. Um, so we should try to prioritize the alert ones, then the high, then the medium, then the low. At recent meetings, we've been told that even the low ones are worth observing more than once. This area here will tell you how many observations there have been. So you can see this WASP-33b, there have been nine observations and three of them have been recent. So if this is a, a low one and there are zero recent or a very small number of recent observations, then it, it's probably worth doing as well. So um, that's another way of prioritizing. This then tells you, <coughs> how much they think the observation is out compared to um, compared to the published data. So you get the position here, the RA and the deck, you get the magnitude, you get the, the depth of the um, transit in um, millimags, and then how long it is in transit for. Now, Very bright objects are quite difficult to do. I imagine a 12th magnitude object would be quite difficult to do on our telescope. The chances are you're going to get much um, dimmer objects than I get with my 8 inch telescope. Now this 12.2 is within the, in the possibility of my telescope. This is so bright that it makes it quite difficult to observe. So one of the things you will look at and use as a way of trying to guess the, um, the length of a single exposure will be the magnitude. <clears throat> so for instance, I know that a 7.9 magnitude object, I would have to observe at maybe 10 or 15 seconds um, and possibly defocused quite a bit as well. Whereas a 12.2, I'll be looking at 120 seconds. The <clears throat> other important part are these um, columns of data here. The first one I always look at is the time. So it depends what time you're going to get to the observatory um, as to if, it's, if you're going to have time to set up and start. Um, or if the time's already started, then it may not be an appropriate one to begin. If any of the times are in red, then it means it's in twilight 
and therefore it, it, it's a more difficult observation. It can be done um, and it's worth just checking how far in twilight it is before you decide if you're going to do it or not. The next most important thing I think is looking at his altitude and um, I personally I've got a small telescope with a CMOS sensor so one of the things that I try to sort of prioritize on if I have a choice of targets is having a high altitude and a consistent altitude now that's not always possible you can see here this one goes from 14 degrees to 54 I would discount this this is far too low for the area that I live um, this is not so bad but 32 degree, 32 degrees in the northwest is going to be hitting a tree for me so you know that's not the best option um, this is a much nicer one it's starting in the east and it's going to the south and southwest um, it's starting at 43 degrees and it's ending at 77 degrees this is quite nice um, this one is very nice as well because it doesn't change much in altitude it's all in the north um, which is towards London which isn't so good but um, this one's a medium priority and this one's a low so I prioritize this one over this one and this gives you uh, I, I guess some insight into my approach to selecting a target so once you've got your target selected we'll now move over to the image capture software and we'll use that to um, do the next step so in this example we are going to use um, this one here uh, sorry this one yeah this one here hat p6b as the example okay and we'll carry on this discussion in part two.